Now, it's been some time since we've made a video, but we wanted to make one that was really high yield. And obstructive versus restrictive lung diseases is a top five question for step one. Literally, we've polled hundreds of students that have responded to our informal poll on our channel, and we found that lung diseases and differentiating between obstructive versus restrictive is in the top five most popular questions asked on USMLE step one. So it's really important to have a mastery of this content. And as such, we're going to explain everything you need to know and all of the really high yield facts that will help you navigate what is actually a pretty simple question. It just takes some getting used to. So let's get started. So there are two flavors of lung diseases. There's obstructive and restrictive. And all that does is it refers to a pattern that the lungs behave. So for example, obstructive lung disease. FEV1 to FVC ratio is less than 0.7. Now let's take a step back. FEV1 and FVC are different parameters that are used in pulmonary function testing. FEV1 over FVC ratio as a ratio in itself is what's used to categorize numerically if the lung disease is an obstructive pattern or a restrictive pattern. So if this ratio is less than 0.7, it's said to be obstructive. Okay? Now, FEV1 is something to keep in mind because what that basically means, and you should be familiar with the different um, pulmonary function test, but FEV1 is the ability to exhale as much as you can in about one second. So this ratio is less than 0.7. In obstructive lung disease, it's harder to get air out. And examples of obstructive lung disease are COPD and asthma. So chronic bronchitis, emphysema, asthma, these are all examples of an obstructive lung disease. Now, I'm giving you normal physiology right now, and after I go over obstructive versus restrictive, I'm going to give you the mnemonic that's going to help you remember all of this. Next, we have restrictive lung diseases. The FEV1 to FVC ratio is greater than 0.7. So in obstructive, it was decreased, but in restrictive, it's increased. In restrictive, it's harder to get air in, so it's harder to, to inhale than it is to exhale. In obstructive, it was harder to exhale, but in restrictive, harder to inhale. And some examples of restrictive lung disease include interstitial lung disease, environmental pneumoconiosis, and ARDS. So anything where you'll get pulmonary fibrosis, honeycombing of the lung, asbestosis, silicosis, ARDS, all of that is an example of restrictive lung diseases. So now I want to give you the mnemonic that's going to help you really differentiate between these two. So first we're going to write out the words obstruct and restrict. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the letters in each word that are different. I've highlighted them here. You can see that the other letters not highlighted are the same in both words. So we're picking out the unique letters in obstruct and restrict. These letters all stand for something very high yield. In obstruct, the O stands for out. It's harder to get the air out. In other words, it's harder to exhale. The B stands for below because the PFTs, i.e., FEV1 over FVC, that entire ratio, is down or below. The entire ratio is down. And the reason that the entire ratio is down is what the U stands for. It's upper, or the numerator. The upper number in the ratio is the reason that drives obstructive pattern. FEV1 is down more than the denominator. And that entire mathematical relationship is what creates a decrease in this ratio. So let's think about this. We said that obstructive lung disease, the FEV1 to FVC ratio was less than 0.7 or less than 70%. The reason that this is down is because the numerator is lower than the denominator. So think, it's just think of basic math here. It's like having one divided by two. If the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then the entire ratio is decreased because one divided by two would be 0.5. And we said that this is less than 0.7. That is exactly what's going on here. So what is high yield? What's high yield is to know why the ratio is down and that the ratio is just down. Also, you need to know that it's harder to get air out. Let's jump down to restrict. The R stands for RIN side. It's harder to get the air inside. So I just wrote RIN side. That's my mnemonic. There's no other way to remember it with the R. RIN side. It's harder to get air RIN or RIN side. E stands for elevated. The PFTs are elevated. So this ratio is greater than 0.7 or greater than 70%. And the reason 
That's what the I stands for. It's the inferior number or the denominator. Now think about this. If both the numerator and the denominator are decreased, and I'm telling you that is what happens in restrictive lung disease, it's still hard to blow a lot of air out in one second, but the FVC is decreased so much more than the FEV1 that the entire ratio as a mathematical ratio is increased. So let's think about this. If the numerator is 4, but the denominator is 2, then the entire ratio is still greater than 1. Think about it. The, ratio, the numerator is still going to be down, the denominator is still going to be down, but the denominator is down so much more that you're actually increasing the ratio. Because when you divide by a smaller number, you have an increased ratio. So I really want you to understand the difference between obstructive and restrictive as it relates to this ratio because that's usually what they try to get you with on step one. They'll describe a patient in the question stem. They'll say something like, the patient has um, airway hyper-responsiveness, mucus plugging, and the symptoms are relieved by albuterol. Um, they'll give you the results of maybe a methacholine challenge test. Basically what they're doing is they're describing in this clinical vignette a patient with asthma. So the first step is that you identify that they're obstructive pattern based on the presentation. The second step is being able to identify what the ratio will be. So oftentimes they'll give you those like three column charts where you're picking based on columns and you have to pick what FEV1 will do, what FVC will do, and what the entire FEV1 divided by FVC ratio will do. So I really, really, really want to stress how this ratio works and what is driving it. So just to be really complete, I'm gonna harp on it a little bit more and go over it one more time. First thing we did with this mnemonic was we wrote obstruct and restrict. We highlighted the letters in obstruct and restrict that are different from one another. That's the O, B, and U in obstruct, and the R, E, and I in restrict. The O stands for out, telling you that it's harder to get air out in an obstructive lung disease. The lungs look hyperinflated. If you ever look at a chest x-ray, they're gonna be hyperinflated because it's harder to get air out. There's gonna be increased space between the ribs because there is so much air being trapped inside. The B stands for below. The PFTs drop below or they decrease. What is driving it? The upper, that's what U stands for, the upper number or the numerator. So the FEV1 is decreased and the FVC really doesn't change that much. So you have a small numerator over an unchanged denominator. That's going to give you a decreased ratio. In restrict, the R stands for RIN side. It's harder to get air RIN or inside. So the person can't really breathe in. The E stands for elevated. The PFTs are going to be elevated. This entire ratio is going to be elevated. And the reason is the inferior or denominator number. That's what the I stands for, the inferior number in this ratio. So think about it. You have a numerator divided by a smaller denominator. That gives you an increased ratio. So you need to know this. You need to know just this. You need to know examples of the different types of diseases so that you can understand which type of pattern they're talking about and then take it a step further by being able to tell them exactly what these numbers are going to do. Once again, your obstructive is going to be COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema, and asthma. Your restrictive will include any type of interstitial lung disease, any type of pulmonary fibrosis secondary to drugs like amiodarone or nitrofurantoin, etc. Know your drug side effects, by the way. Any type of environmental pneumoconiosis, such as asbestosis, silicosis, beryliosis, and ARDS. Know the examples and then take it a step further mentally and ask yourself, what does the FEV1 do? What does the FVC do? And therefore, what does the FEV1 divided by FVC ratio do? This mnemonic keeps it simple and this mnemonic is high yield. I guarantee you, I would bet every single dollar I've taken out in medical school loans that you're going to be asked at least three questions about this. Three! I'm giving you free points here, guys. It's high yield. Study it and know it well. Good luck.